Hi, thanks for coming. My name is Patrick Wolf, and I'm a product manager on Bitbucket. Um, I've been around for about three and a half years now, and I'm happy to be here speaking with you today. I'm Gayatri. I'm also a product manager with Patrick on Bitbucket, and I've been working with him on the project stuff that we'll tell you about later today. I've been with Atlassian for about a year and a half now. Today, we'll be talking to you about Bitbucket's enterprise roadmap. Um, I will then talk to you about one of the projects that we've been working on on Bitbucket project settings, and then Patrick will walk us through project permissions. Thanks, Gayatri. So as most of you should know, um, around last year, actually at the end of 2020, we announced that we were going to end of life all server licenses. Um, this does not include data center. We're still going to produce um, data center new features and roadmap for that, but server licenses are going away. And with that, we want to make sure that all customers can migrate to the cloud at their own pace um, and have all of the features that they've had on the server within the cloud as well. So this includes Bitbucket. So everything we're doing for Bitbucket these days is around how do we make sure that Bitbucket is ready to support every customer in the cloud, regardless of size um, or enterprise needs. And that is what our focus is, and that's gonna be our focus for the next two years um, in Bitbucket Cloud. So first off, we wanted to make sure that it was possible to migrate to the cloud. So before we even announced the end of life for server, we began work on a cloud migration assistant for Bitbucket. There's a Jira migration assistant, there's a Confluence migration assistant, and we wanted to make sure there was a Bitbucket migration assistant as well. Um, so with that, we, we now have released the Bitbucket Cloud Migration Assistant. We released that in October of last year. And just recently, we also had that certified for Data Center to migrate from Data Center as well. And this tool will actually migrate all of your repos, all of your projects, all of your users, and all of your PR data included as well. So all of your PRs that you have or pull requests um, on server or Data Center would be migrated to the cloud uh, for you with that. And since the release of that tool back in October, we've actually seen over 70,000 repos migrated to the cloud. Um, and we've seen that number go up exponentially over the last several weeks. So we, we should see that number grow and grow over the coming years. So that's for migrating and how to get customers to migrate. But once they get to the cloud, what's gonna be available to them? And that's what we're really making our focus for all of the product changes are. And we have three main categories for those changes. The first is performance and scale. Can the product scale to the size for thousands and thousands of users? Um, and be performant with that. The next is security and compliance, which of course is a, is a major feature that people want when they move to the cloud to make sure everything is trusted and secure in the cloud. And lastly is the administration. How do we take Bitbucket to the next level to be able to administer and manage thousands of users and thousands of repos across different ge geography, uh, geographies um, throughout our customers? So I wanna take a few minutes just to talk about what those changes include. First, if you haven't heard, we spent a lot of time migrating our data center. Originally, Bitbucket had our own hosted data center, um, and we spent a lot of time migrating that to the Atlassian Pass platform called Micros. Um, there was a blog post about this, and with that move, we actually saw 56% overall improvement just in performance for that. Um, so customers should see a much faster Bitbucket um, for most tasks now. Uh, we are also working on fixing how diffs work within Bitbucket. So when you're looking at pull requests and merges, uh, we should be able to see about a 4x improvement for that. Those changes are coming. They haven't been released yet, but just internal for testing, we are seeing a 4x improvement. Um, and lastly, we're, we're working on a UI review to go through all of the pages in Bitbucket and make sure that any of our UX needs to change to, to support thousands of users, thousands of repositories, thousands of projects, um, that the UI is not going to be a problem for that. Looking at security and compliance, what we've been changing, um, as of now, as a few months ago, all data for customers in Bitbucket is encrypted both at rest and in transit. There is no time that any data for Bitbucket customers is not encrypted um, now. Um, the next step is audit logs. We are completely rewriting our audit logs, and this is um, going to include all Git actions, all user changes, um, all API token usage, all of that information is going to be in the audit logs as well. And with that, we're also integrating that within Atlassian Access so that all of your audit logs will be available within Access to be able to consolidate that with your audit logs across Jira, Confluence, and see all of those events in one place. 
um, as well as export those events to an external tool or have an API um, to pull those down as well. And for pipelines, we actually support OpenID Connect. Um, this allows you to deploy to AWS or other cloud providers without secrets or access keys stored in that. We have just uh, an OpenID connection to those cl cloud platforms to be able to easily deploy for that. Looking at administration, um, one thing that's near and dear to my heart I've been working on for quite a while is shared user management. And this is the ability to manage all of your users um, for Jira, Confluence, Bitbucket, um, Ops Genie, everything within one place in Admin Hub. So you won't have to manage Bitbucket users separately. Um, this will include full access support, which will be skim user provisioning. Lastly, one thing that I want to bring up is for projects. With projects, um, in Bitbucket. They've been around for a while, but they've always been more just a label or a category. They haven't been a full um, part of the hierarchy for Bitbucket. So with that, we wanted to talk today about what we're changing for projects, uh, specifically settings and permissions. Um, I actually will take you through settings, and then I'll come back and talk about permissions and when they're available for that. So with that, I'll hand it over to you, Gayatri. Thank you, Patrick, for telling us about what we can look forward to um, coming from Bitbucket. Um, so as Patrick mentioned, um, we are solving the problem of um, project settings, and we have that available in product for you today. I'll spend the next couple of minutes telling you exactly what we're doing here with projects, as well as what you can look forward to coming up next. So project settings are a way for admins to set and control standards across multiple repositories. Um, this is in particular really useful for our larger customers who have many repositories in each of their projects and want standards to be enforced across all of them. And this is also really useful for our existing customers. Um, since project settings are already available in Bitbucket server, releasing project settings in cloud today brings a smoother experience for our migrating customers. Um, Project settings also allows admins to improve security and compliance within repositories. And as Patrick was saying, security and compliance is a top priority for us over here at Bitbucket Cloud. Um, and with project settings, admins can ensure that their standards are being set and maintained across their project. Project settings has long been one of Bitbucket's top customer feature requests and has also been noted as a cloud migration blocker. So we've been really pleased to be able to offer that in product now. We currently offer four settings, and I'll tell you a bit about them in a moment, and we have a few more on the way. Default reviewers allows admins to establish that a person or a group of people must review a pull request before it's committed. Um, this will prevent bad actors from pushing bad code, and also allows that an admin can be sure that a repo is safe from malicious or breaking commits. Access keys allow admins to set up external jobs without needing to add a user to Bitbucket. Both default reviewers and access keys improve the ease of use of Bitbucket for our administrators, which is really important for large customers who have more repositories and a stronger need for security and compliance. Setting project level branching models and merge strategies allows admins to enforce standards across repositories to follow the same structure. Um, these two features codify the process that, and the way that people work within their repositories. And so both merge strategies and branching model gives the repositories better uniformity. We have quite an exciting roadmap here for project settings. We're continuing to bring settings like branch permissions and merge checks to the project level. Um, Project level branch restrictions also um, allows admins to prevent unauthorized pushing to or deleting a branch. And project level merge checks allows admins to require specific conditions on merges for individual branches or branch patterns. In order to enhance the functionality um, of project settings, we're giving admins the ability to focus, um, sorry, to force project settings with no additions or amendments. Enforced project settings not only allows admins to set project level standardizations, but it also allows them to um, ensure that they are followed exactly as set. This will be a premium feature when it's eventually launched later this year. Another thing that we're working on delivering is pipelines level project settings, which will allow admins to set um, project level settings for their CI CD workflows. And with that, I'll hand it back to Patrick to walk us through project permissions. Thanks, Gayatri. 
So as we talked about, project settings are available today. Um, project permissions um, are taking longer to do because we're rewriting the entire permission engine in Bitbucket for this. Um, and with that, we're looking at Bitbucket server and data center for that model and follow that model as close as possible so that it's a more of a seamless transition when you move from server to cloud that it should feel familiar and all of the same features are there for that. So the goal for project permissions um, are, are uh, threefold. The first is autonomy. We want to be able to foster self-service um, for different teams across your workspace that they can operate in silos and work on various things when, and only have their permissions for that and be able to add any user they want to that project if they're available in the workspace. Um, this allows teams to um, kind of isolate contractors. It also allows teams to um, proactively add more and more users to their project if they want to make that more open. It's up to the teams to decide for that. And it also lets the workspace admin operate at a higher level and not have to do day-to-day -day task and only operate at workspace um, admin privileges um, at, where you don't have to give that out anymore. One thing we noticed is a lot of people will give out workspace admin in Bitbucket Cloud because they don't want to deal with administrative tasks they shouldn't be dealing with at a workspace level. Project admin will let them operate at a lower level with more delegated responsibility without having full control of everything. Um, the next piece is scale, and this should be obvious that if you're managing things at a project level, you can scale much larger. It's not just one horizontal group of repositories. It is a categorized group of projects that you're managing, and each one of those projects can be managed independently across all of those repos. And it also lets you set permissions on all of your repositories in one place instead of having to go to every repository for that. And the last piece of that is better security practices. As I mentioned, a lot of people gave out workspace admin far too frequently, um, and this creates a bad security model where too many people have too many uh, privileges, and you want the least privilege possible for doing this, so it's, it's a much better delegation model for that. So here's a quick overview of what that's going to look like in Bitbucket once that comes out later this summer. So at a repository level right now, this is what you normally see today in Bitbucket is you're managing or permissions on your repositories. And I've got two groups and one user, oh, sorry, three groups on this repository that have read access to that. So one thing we're adding is the ability to see other permissions at the repository level too. So now I can actually switch and view all my permissions were there um, on that repository or permissions that are set at the project level as well. So now, in addition to the repository permissions, I've got two groups and a user at the project level that are inherited down into the repository. So you cannot modify these. If you notice, these permissions aren't modifiable here. This is at the repository level. I can only view what they have access to. So if I navigate up to my project now, I can see the same people that were given permission at that repo at the project level. This means they all have permission across all of the repos, not just that one specific repo that we were looking at before, um, but they have permissions across all of them. Um, so now if I want to make a change at the project level, so I take Jim's permission and I change it from read to write, and I set that at the project level, when I go back to my repository settings now, I can notice that now everyone still has read, but Jim has write access to that. And if you notice again that Jim, developers, and quality have um, Un unchangeable or unmodifiable permissions at the repository level. Um, they're not set there, so you cannot change them at the repository level. So this is very much an inherited model like Bitbucket um, Server and Data Center are. And this is going to be available later this late summer um, for this calendar year. So with that, the main takeaways we want you to take away um, from our talk today is one, BCMA is available. If you want to test that out and migrate that, it's available on the Atlassian Marketplace. You can download that today for your Bitbucket server or data center, um, do some test runs, set that up, and just practice with that um, and see what it's going to look like if you are interested in migrating. The next is that everything we're doing in Bitbucket is to make it more enterprise ready. Um, it's not going to be an easy um, change, but it is something over time. Um, you're going to see more and more enterprise features added to Bitbucket. And lastly, projects are going to be a real thing in Bitbucket with settings and permissions, and that's going to be available either now or very soon in the future for that. So with that. So thank you all for, for listening to us today. And if you'd like to hear more, please visit Patrick and I in our booth outside. And we also encourage you to monitor the public roadmap at atlassian.com forward slash roadmap. 
And if you'd like to learn more or chat with us, please reach out via sales or support to schedule a Zoom with us.